welcome to our review on the nervous system. So when we're considering the nervous system, the first thing we actually need to know about are a few key terms that we're going to use throughout this topic. First one of these is the stimulus. So whenever we talk about a stimulus, we're referring to a change in the environment. And the second key word we need to know is the word receptor. So what we're talking about, there are groups of cells that will detect the stimulus. Once we've actually had a stimulus that's detected by those receptors, then we end up with some kind of a response, which is going to occur from what's called an effector. Now, effectors are either glands or muscles. So if it's a muscle, then the response will be that the muscle will contract. Whereas if it's a gland that's being stimulated, then it will release hormones. So when we're talking about these receptor cells, we'll find them within the sense organs in our body. And what we have are different receptors for different stimuli. So what happens there is if we consider the sense organs themselves, we can see what receptor cells they've got and what stimulus those receptor cells are detecting. So I've given you a table on the right hand side there that gives you a quick overview of this. So if we consider the sense organ of our eye, the receptor cells there are light ones and the stimulus to them is light. So what we find our receptor cells in the eye are actually made up of cone cells and rod cells that will detect light for us. Our sense organ of the tongue, then it's all about taste and the stimulus are different chemicals present within the things we take into our mouth. The skin will be sensing our temperature and our pressure. So the stimulus is either pressure or heat. And our nose is about smell and taste. And again, these are chemical stimuli. So what these receptor cells actually do, once they've been stimulated by the stimulus, then they change that into an electrical impulse that's going to travel along the neurons to our central nervous system or CNS. When we're talking about the CNS or central nervous system, we're talking about part of our body made up of the brain and spinal cord. Now that used to be a common question asking what's the CNS made of brain and spinal cord. Now they're actually made of this very delicate nervous tissue. So because of that, we've got to protect them. And the way that we do that is by protecting the brain with our skull and by protecting the spinal cord with our vertebrae or the vertebral column. So to carry out this nervous communication throughout our body, we actually have three types of neuron. The first one, the sensory neurons, these are the ones that run from the receptor cells to the central nervous system. The relay neurons are the ones that go from our sensory neurons to motor neurons. And then finally, our motor neurons, these go from our central nervous system to the effector. So what we actually find is these individual neurons, which are nerve cells, are actually bundled together into these larger collections called a nerve. So when you refer to a nerve in your body, you're actually talking about a collection of these neurons. So just to give you an idea about the differences between these neurons, I've given you pictures here of each of the three types. So in the top right, you can see the sensory neuron there. So the big bit that runs right the way from end to end is called the axon. And the key way to identify your sensory neuron is the position of the cell body in the middle there on the axon. So not at either end, but if the cell body is in that central point coming off the axon, then we've got a sensory neuron. The motor neuron in the bottom right there, that's got the cell body at one end, the axon running all the way along, and then the little branched ends on the opposite side to the cell body. And then finally, our relay neuron on the bottom left corner there, that one has the body in the middle, and then all of these little branches coming off, so much shorter axons, but looking almost kind of snowflake-like. So make sure you can identify those three different diagrams as the three types of neuron. So if we consider what's actually going to happen for a nervous reaction to take place, first thing, we have our stimulus. That's going to stimulate the receptor cells. They pass an electrical signal along the sensory neuron to the spinal cord, which passes it to the brain, then back to the spinal cord again, along a motor neuron to the effector, where we then see the response. Now, that whole sequence takes around 0.7 seconds. So we're talking about something that's really fast. What we actually find is the diagram we have just looked at for our nervous reaction is an incredibly simplified version. 
what's actually happening is at every point of the day your brain is receiving vast amounts of information from all these different sensory receptors all coming in at the same time and what your brain does is it's incredibly clever that it's going to process all of that information to form what's called a coordinated response so rather than just sending a single impulse down a single nerve to move a single muscle then what we'll actually find is we'll have this series of impulses being sent to different parts of the body to allow you to have a proper response to whatever stimulus you've been exposed to hopefully at the end of this video you can now state the function of our nervous system you can describe the difference in function of our sensory and our motor neurons and explain how the nervous system produces this coordinated response.